Okay, so we've got a few people watching. We've got Lauren who's watching, um, Henny's watching, and Norman is watching. And Norman has said to us, you have to unlock your screen. Ah. Have you got your screen locked? No, the screen's locked. Hang on, guys. Let me just... Here's the uh, painting we're going to be doing. Let's just... I don't know what's going on. Do you want me to hold it? Okay, so now we're... I just want to see. No. No. So, we'll have to do it in portrait, okay? Okay, guys, well, let's hope that this is now the real thing. Um, I'm Simon from Painting in France, and welcome to a somewhat narrow uh, landscape. It should be a landscape, but now it's portrait format. Um, we are going to be painting this scene here today. I don't know if you can see that. This one here, we're going to do this. And, um, but first of all, a brief history. Um, as I said, Simon from Painting in France. We are living down here in the south of France. Like you guys, I guess we are also in a lockdown. Ours is pretty severe. We are allowed out one hour a day, take a short walk with the dog, and then we're in. In some ways, we're not doing too bad because we both work from home. We have this lovely studio here and um, the garden outside. So it's kind of um, not a bad place to be. A little pan around studio there. It's a fine artwork. We can negotiate the sale of any of the items you see. Uh, just get in touch with my people. Um, in the meantime, like I said, what we're going to do today is paint this scene here. Last Sunday, I went out for a walk. We went out for a walk with our dog, Millie, and took some photographs about a kilometre loop from where we are, and I thought that would make a nice painting. So actually, what I did was I painted some pictures in a, the journal, which you may have seen online. This is like a little sketch pad I keep, and... Um, Often have little sketches of our travels and then some of them I have colour. A little bit of Bridget and Nephew, as some of you may recognise. And this is the scene. So this is the scene we're going to do today. This was the quick painting I did. Um, watercolour and biro, very simple. And um, here's a photograph. And hopefully you've got a bit of a reference photograph. If some of you are painting with me today, good luck. Because this all may go horribly wrong. It's got off to a bumpy start, as you can see. Um, I shall be shouting at Facebook as to why. We did a film last week at Monica um, in the kitchen, which were just like handheld, and we did it all <laughs> landscape format. But this is it. Anyway, what we've got, I've done the drawing here already. Maybe you've got this. Uh, well, what I will do, I'll actually make a start on the painting, and then there will be pauses where I have to let a layer dry, and I can chat a bit more. But first of all, I have... Dampened the paper a little bit earlier, so that kind of helps the washes. Um, let me think. Okay, right. So I'm going to mix up a kind of mixture of cerulean blue. Do you want to look on the uh, cerulean blue? Possibly with a, a little bit of pathalo blue. Basically, I tend to... I can give you a list of all the colours I'll be using. Um, but really, all you need is a light version and a dark version of every colour. Light blue, dark blue light yellow, dark yellow, light red, dark red. That sounds a bit of an oversimplification, but I think it's not a bad place to start. Anyway, I'm going to just put, wash some sky in. It's very pale, so I'm just going to make this nice and watery. I have um, a little bit of test paper down there. Just make that nice. You can always add another layer of stronger colour if you need to. Here we go. Right, I'm going to put this on here. Nice big brush and uh, bold left to right brush strokes. And we're going across there, and um, that's what I'm going to do. I'm just adding a little bit of water to the mix. Um, don't put water straight out of the picture. I'm just going to put a little bit of water into the mix just to kind of fade that out. And there we go. Almost a clean brush. Clean that up and just wipe that across there. So that's just fading out. Fun enough, in the photograph I've printed out, the sky is quite yellow. Um, damp brush, I'm just going to wipe some clouds down. People who've come on these courses before know this is a, a regular move of mine. Just a kind of clear brush, almost dry, just wipe some, while it's damp you can wipe out the brushes. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that um, 
Of course, we had got a lot of painting holidays planned this summer and workshops which take place here in the studio. Um, unfortunately, everything, of course, due to lockdown is and coronavirus have been postponed. I mean, hopefully, our September holidays will be taking place. Uh, we'll be keeping in touch as soon as we know more. Um, obviously, you're, you've had holidays cancelled. You've um, just... Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I normally, I like to work... <laughs> with an edit, you know, I can sort of film stuff, take a, two or three takes until I get it right. But now we're working live. But yeah, if you've had travel plans changed and I cancel, that's disappointing. Hopefully the world will be a better place within the next few months. Uh, and our holidays, as yours will be, resuming. Just while we're waiting th for things to dry, we've got a few people that have um, logged on. We've got Di Peters from Queensland, Australia. Queensland, Australia. And we've got yeah. Robin Donnellan as well, another one from Oz. So we've got a few people from Australia. That's the spirit. That's what I like. I guess you guys have got a lockdown as well. Well, I was speaking to someone in Noosa yesterday, and there it's a kind of lockdown in a, with a small L. So that he's been going out a little bit, but uh, I believe the beach is closed this weekend. It's like Jaws, isn't it? So what are you... I okay, see you furiously. I'm, yeah, now I am going to... I've got those distant hills and I'm going to put a little bit of um, this kind of pale... Oh, that's not very pale. We just want to hint at some hills. So I've got a little bit of the blue, just a little bit of magenta and we're going to put um, put that onto the hills there in the background. I'm just going to wash this. It's very pale. Oh, this is good. This is, we had hoped to be... Um, <laughs> No, he's not uh, going to. We had hoped to be perhaps setting up on the terrace, overlooking the garden, overlooking the vineyards. But um, our neighbour has taken to training at home, as a lot of us have been doing. And he's, he's doing weightlifting on his little terrace. But of course, it sounds like he's, it's, <laughs> it's got a guttle. It's like we had a, a class here last summer. Oh, by the way, this is, I'm just washing in some... Um, very pale magenta and grey mixed in here, a bit of the sky blue. And what I'm going to do is um, put a very kind of pale green. I've got like a lemony green, sap green and a bit of yellow in there. I'm just going to put that in. Basically you work very light to begin with. And um, I'm going to get that running across there. At this stage it can be quite, but keep it, keep it light, keep it thin. And we're going to come down. And I'll be talking more sense in a second. I just want to get this on. This is just sort of coming down around that little pathway there. And over here. We'll leave a little bit of, bit of, bit of, we'll leave a little bit of white in the path. Just to uh, leave a bit of white in the path. Because there is some. And um, this just gets that kind of basic colour. I might just add a little slightly stronger green down here in the foreground. Eventually we're going to be painting grassy pieces here. We've had a few more people join us. Um, somebody from Singapore, Alicia. From Singapore, good. And this is, this is worldwide. Dan Moore. Dan Moore, Dan. Good to hear from you. Good to see you. I hope you're well. <laughs> and I all hope you'll be uh, taking up your watercolour paintings, digging them out of the loft, having a go next week. Or this weekend, because you can't go anywhere. Anyway, so that's... Got the kind of basic, we've got a basic sky in there, the first wave of distant mountains and that first kind of green colour there too. Uh, but yeah, going back to the, the, the weight trainer next door, we had a, a, a class here last summer uh, of genteel English ladies with some light classical music playing. It was hot, so we had the doors open <laughs> and they're just the sound of tinkling teaspoons in china cups. <laughs> and, and this guy starts up, he's like, please, please. We had to issue good ladies with the smelling salts because there was uh, people fainting. It was, it was terrible. It was terrible. I had to assure them it was some weight training going on. Anyway, back to the painting. Back to the painting. When you've got um, a kind of light overall colours everywhere, that's great because that just sets you up a few little horizontal pieces here and there. At this stage, you can be quite quite rough. People tend to get a little bit too close and start putting grassy things in like this, which is no good. Um, I'm going to go back to those distant hills with my this kind of ultramarine and a little bit of Payne's grey. Um, but what we don't want is it for, to be too strong. 
Um, so try that, mix it up, try a bit of paper. Basically, this range of hills is a little bit... Can tough. we just... Yes, yeah, it reminds me of the photograph. I'm gonna, we've sort of got the overall colour in now. Oh, this light colour. And I'm, I've got those distant hills, and I'm going to put this, this range in here. Slightly stronger, so they kind of come forward. Um, you have to kind of let the sky dry before you do it, otherwise your hills go up to meet the sky. So, let me just try a bit of that. And Nikki Shales from Alderney has joined us as well. Hi there. I hope that holidays work out and you can come along. Okay, there we are. I'm just going to put that in there like that. Um, at this stage, you can almost draw, you can roll your big fat brush with a, to a point, and you can just sort of get a little bit of texture in there, a little bit of just a hint at the, the shape of the, the hills. And then once again, I'm going to clean damp brush, just put that there. I might put a bit more tone on those other hills, but as you can see, we're starting, hopefully, you can see, we're getting um, the layers coming forward. And if you've just joined us, I do apologise for the vertical format. We have tried before in horizontal format, um, which worked, uh, but today it didn't want to work. I think it's some kind of sabotage. So, where are we now? Um, we'll go back to our picture. There's lovely, what I liked about this picture, the scene, was this um, lovely kind of dist layers, distant hills. Next up then it gets a nice sort of shaft of sunlight, an optimistic shaft of sunlight in the early morning um, across here. So I'm gonna try and leave that quite light there. I'm gonna start putting some of these darker areas in. I think what I'll do is I'll just mix this for a stronger green. This is like a hooker's green, slightly darker. Um, yeah, dark and green. Which one's your hooker's? Uh, this one here. That one over there, okay. One. I'm just kind of, gonna sort of put, I wanna leave a little bit of sunlight on the top of here. So I'm just sort of, and it kind of goes around there. So we're kind of putting this, this bag here up. Oh. Oh, <laughs> yeah, this is the, the joys of working live or, or or vertically. Things do tend to run down the page a bit. I may have uh, gone in there a little bit early. It's still quite damp underneath. Do you ever use sort of toilet paper or anything like that to kind of damp, um, to sort of dab it up a bit if necessary? Or? You know, artist tissue. Uh, yes, I do. Um, today we've got a little bit of, I've got a bit of a rag and I'm just going to put that in like that. So as you can see, it's starting to get a bit more life to it, a bit more character. And um, I'll do the same over here, but we've got that. I'm just trying to keep that nice, sunny, sunny bit here. Joan Witcher is watching. Joan, hello there, how are you? I hope you're keeping well and uh, painting furiously over these lockdown weeks. And you. Your sister has joined us. Sister, which sister? Sarah. Sarah. Hello, Cornwall. And Sandra van Borgerijen. Ah, Sandra from Montpellier. Soon to be back in the UK. There we are. Good to hear from you. Good to see you. This is all taken shape. by How you get, if anyone's painting this, I said good luck. <laughs> I did paint it last night, actually. I mean, I did have a go at painting it last night just to kind of warm up, if you like, because it's often, often you can do, um, you know, like you do a little sketch like this in about 10 minutes and you think, oh, that's great. And then, of course, you try and replicate it larger and it's, it all goes horribly wrong. Henny, Henny knows that story. You can do a little test piece that it looks fantastic and then you try and do the larger one and it can all go horribly wrong. Uh, Henny was um, one of the students who came here often um, and she was very enthusiastic and often would complete three or four paintings of the same scene, which is a good way to do it, actually, a good way to do it. The first one is often looser, then it, it develops, but it doesn't always necessarily mean that the last one will be the best one, because you can start getting a bit more critical, a bit tighter. Um, but like I said, I did one last night, and I'll, I'll show you later on. It didn't really work out too well. So, don't worry if it doesn't work out. But We have a... Please, can we have a, um, a beach scene next time? I'm missing the sea. Beach scene, certainly, yes, certainly. We can do a beach scene. Uh, I can stand here in a swimming costume and uh, Monica can have a bikini on behind the camera. <laughs> you wish. So, uh, there we are. Um, okay, I've got a slightly smaller brush now. And what I'm going to do is start putting a little bit of, if we come back over here, this is the, 
that's a kind of key part of the painting. Often you'll, there'll be a, a vital part that quite often students will miss. They'll just sort of paint trally la la the whole scene and realise, for me, it's all about sunlight and drama. And uh, in this case, we've got that kind of dark section there and then it goes dark in there. So I've got to, you've got to keep this little shaft of sunlight there. Just run out. Got a weightlifter going next door, is it? Yeah, a weightlifter is. We've got the door shut, so um, hopefully you won't be um, disturbing anyone. Okay, can so, I focus back on the painting? Back on the painting, yeah. Actually, we've got these little... Um... Di Peter said she absolutely loves your sketchbook paintings. Oh, good, good, good. This is what we like. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of... We've got some... Beyond that little dark section, there's some sort of little olive trees, I think. I'm just going to put those in there like that. Just a little hint of something. Okay, so as you said, we're sort of coming forward, gets a bit stronger, colour gets a bit thicker, and um, that's fine, that's good. Okay, now I'm going to use the, the hook is green again, so the mix up this, this can be quite thick now, quite strong. Let me I'm just gonna... focus in on that just to show. Okay, yeah, this is a bit. So water, it's all about that, you, the, the amount of water you put in. You know, you start with a lot of water, so you've got a first sort of wash is quite light, and the next wave is a little bit thick, a bit more paint, a bit less water, and then finally, you'll see later on, we put these poppies in, and they're going to be just literally straight out of the tube. So, um, where are we going? It's, a bit of, it's quite a good idea to keep a half an eye on the, on the picture. I'm just going to, what do I want to do? It's kind of here. Is that just kind of your dark line almost? This is the dark, the dark section beyond the shaft of sunlight. I'm almost, I've got quite a fine brush and it's... Um, what, it's, what size brush is that, just out of interest? Like, I think it's, for what it's worth, I think, it's just, I think they call it size 10. <laughs> size 10, so I'm just literally, I'm sort of doing this, this kind of thing. Just sort of flicking that up, I don't know if you can see that. Um, quite often people go like that for everything, trees, hills, but no, try and vary your brush stroke. So like for now, we're just flicking it up so it's heavier and lighter. It also gives you, it seems to give you more sort of variance in the colour as well. Exactly, you, you yes. know, sort of, exactly. you go from dark to light. Yes. Let's see if we can uh, maintain that. Um, I'm going to put, so just sort of quietly put, and then flick a few down into the lighter area, but I'm just keep trying that... to get in behind you. No, go carry on. I'm yeah. just, just want to show a bit more. So that's yeah, that kind of runs into there. It's okay, I think if that bleeds up, you may think it is too detailed, too soon, but hopefully, I think it'll be okay. And then I think that there's that area there, and then this will. Well, I've got the dark brush here, I'm gonna. That's still a bit too wet there. <clears throat> you can see how it gives you the difference. That's um, oh yeah, this is a wet into wet by accident. This is bleeding out too much. Whereas here, it was wet onto dry, and you get a crisp line, which is the difference. <clears throat> it's funny when I started to do to do lessons, I actually had to, to go and buy some books to find out what how you how you teach or how you do these things. Because I've been working commercially for nigh on 40 years, you know. Commercially, various advertising agencies and design consultancies, architectural practices and so on. Um, and, uh, yeah, the, I can't remember what I was going to say now. <laughs> what was it? it was that you oh, had yeah. to learn I, how I to teach. It, I, I do a lot of it automatically. Do you want a um, sip of water? I've got some, I've got a glass okay, you just did yourself yeah. croaky. Okay, um, I'll do this and I'll have a Phil, has, Phil Riley has joined us. Phil! Hello there, ah, a man on his turbo. And Gillian Paravano. Oh, great, hi Gillian. And your niece. Niece, excellent. Millie. Millie, hi there. Now you see, well, this is still a bit damp down here. So I'm just, what I'm going to do, uh, what I'll do, I'm just going to... Do you need a hairdryer? Uh, I've got one, <laughs> I can speed up the drying process. Actually, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to flick this in quite randomly here. This just gives a little bit of texture. I mean, today I think it's, it's not about precision artwork, it's about the overall feel. So if you've got like, just sort of flicking that brush in there, we're gonna, we'll add some more detailed line work in there later on. So it can, I'm just gonna let it fade out there. And That's it. 
Helen Untied is watching from South Hello. Africa. Good day. No, how's it? How's it? <laughs> yeah, that's right there. It's, we're going global. This, there must be nearly fifty thousand people watching, which is quite a quite remarkable. I thought it was just going to be my mum and someone who accidentally came across the channel, thinking it was a shopping channel, and that was it. But no, this is uh, all good. All bodes well. I've normally got a little bit of music going in the background. <clears throat> it's quite funny. We start a class with. Um, just a Spotify, a nice Spotify playlist, and after a few minutes, it usually goes off on a complete tangent, ends up with some rather maudlin um, Portuguese fado music. I'm often getting kind of sponges and bits of tape thrown at me to um, change the thing, so I've not got any music on today. So, where are we? I think that's still quite wet here. I'm just going to put a little bit of texture into there. You can see we're slowly building that up now. We're getting that kind of little dark area quite nicely there. And um, I can't remember what I do next. Oh yeah, do you want to look at this? Yeah, so we've, we've kind of got this sort of dark area now going on. <clears throat> I'm going to put a little bit of texture into that area. And then I think we can look at some trees. Oh, wow. This little area here, and I'm going to, I've got a, a kind of straight out of the tube sort of lime green colour. What's it called? And Martin is Ma Martin Brown. John is watching as uh, well. Martin, ah, good man. Yes, he was also uh, and is we hope still booked in for a, a holiday. It was going to be June, but I think it'll be postponed. Um, well, but we fact, hope not. We hope not indeed. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. You're being optimistic. Yes, one has to be. So I've got a quite a sort of limey green colour mixed up. Um, and I'm just going to stick in some. Here we go. You see the difference? I'm just putting a little bit of texture in there. Yeah, I can hear the. I can hear the. Uh, <laughs> the man next door. Martin actually said, "Can Willits hear the waitlist left for sound effects?" <laughs> uh, yeah. he's, just, uh, he's just warming up. Okay. That's quite nice. Oh, like I said, I've just, I usually take much longer on the paint. In fact, what I'm going to do, I don't know, uh, It's going to get noisy, sorry. <laughs> what we're going to try and do is use the art, artist's little helper and dry things off a little bit. Any other pearls of wisdom while you... <laughs> pearls of wisdom. Um, other, <laughs> I should have a long list of pearls of wisdom. But no, I have not. In fact, what we're going to do, this is... It is always best to let a painting dry a little bit before carrying on. Otherwise, it just becomes one kind of blurry, blurry mess. Um, so what I'm going to do, rather than carry on painting down into this greeny area here, I'm going to go and do some leaves on the trees. We'll put the leaves... What should we do? We put the I mean, do you in. find that when you're working outside on plein air that things tend to dry, dry more quickly with uh, a bit of breeze and a bit of sunshine? Yeah, things do tend to dry more, dry more quickly outdoors, but you do tend to get like um, wasps and bees and, and things and flies landing on your picture. Um, but that's all part of the drama, part of the, uh, the joy, really. So you're going to start on what the I'm trees. What I'm going to do now is just put the tree trunks in. What I've got here, I've got a bit of Payne's grey, and I'm going to just use here we are, burnt umber or tree trunk brown, and uh, mix those together. So it's quite quite thick, and um, it's like a number ten. It's ten brush, and I'm just going to. Yeah, basically, it's always good to flick. That's a little bit strong. I'm going to add a bit more water. Um, it's always good to flick a tree from the bottom upwards, which is the way they grow, let's face it. Because it tend, the branches do get thinner as you go up. You know, I have seen a number of times I've seen a painting with the branches actually thicker than the trunk. But today we're going to be doing it like this. Um, it's quite nice with these brushes, you can 
uh, just sort of flick that up. I'm sort of sticking to the original drawing, but I'm just sort of making it up a bit as well. I'm just sort of try to keep that. Neil St. Right. Clair is watching. We had, we had somebody who tried to join us, but she said she couldn't get the, ah. get the live stream, so she'll catch up with us soon. Okay, great. Gabby Ransom. Good to see Neil. I'm sure he's got his um, paintings out, paintbrushes out, and uh, be doing some. They'll be slightly larger than yours, though. Probably, yeah. Um, so, yeah, flip those little leaves out there. That's, we can sort of put a few little uh, grassy blades over there. That little, that's going to be fine for that. A little bit of a. So, don't, don't make it too regular. I mean, I've. You know, I'm just going to. Uh, often people will, will paint a tree and have a trunk straight up and their branches going straight out, which. Believe me, it's not how they grow. I suppose it's the way we learn to to, to draw trees as children, isn't it? I guess so, yeah. So, um, so, I've, um, so I did a drawing um, with a 2B pencil. I kind of had the, the original photograph up on the screen, computer screen, and then drew the pencil drawing with a 2B pencil. Um, not too hard, but hard enough so you can still see where you're... Uh, where your tree trunks are, I'm just sort of... Okay, just flicking to the side just so we can see past sure, Simon's yeah. hand. Just sort of flicking that out. Um, I mean, there's a, a massive... I mean, do you find that um, techniques change at all when you're working in studio from a photograph in comparison to en plein air, or is it very much the same thing? I'd, I'd say it's probably easier to work in the comfort of your own studio because, you know, you've got the radio on, so the, you control the conditions... And, um, yeah, you know, you can choose your photographs. Uh, I mean, that's, that's the, the, the big plus about working from photographs, especially now, of course, in lockdown, you can go onto Google Images and travel around the world, download a photograph and do your painting on a beach or something like that. Um, so that, that does kind of work. Obviously, if you're going on plan there, you've got to find the place, you've got to get there. Uh, in fact, that's been quite a challenge with our painting holidays because... Um, it's one thing having you know, a wonderful scene which you've, you've photographed on a walk, but if you try and get a, a group of people there and equipment, it starts turning into a bit of a bit of a safari, uh, and then and shade. Yes, yeah. I mean, somewhere to park, <laughs> somewhere to park, not too far from the actual place. Uh, shade's always good, and not forget toilets. You do need toilets. So that kind of adventurous style of watercolor painting is uh, a bit more of a challenge. In fact, that's the challenge with the en plein air painting, especially in a group. Um, I'd love to do some more adventurous uh, uh, painting holidays um, where we go, who knows, a bit more off the beaten track. Carrying, carrying your, you know, a bit more like a... What, like a safari? Yeah, like a safari, yes. Carrying your stuff on your back. Perhaps there are a few people hacking through the jungle or going across a desert. That'd be amazing, wouldn't it? Yeah. If anybody wants to uh, help sort of come on that one, Get in touch, let's see if we can work something out. Okay, I've got them, these kind of trunks in there now. I'm just gonna put a few more. We can always add a few more branches later on. Um, I'm kind of, how's these looking anyway? Is everybody happy? Everybody happy? <laughs> and, um, I mean, look. <laughs> if anybody is painting live and has questions, yeah. um, please also get in touch and we'll try and answer your questions as we go along. See how it goes. Um, so what I've done now, I am now going to, we, if you come back to the, um, the picture now, we've got these roughly in position. And now I'm going to get perhaps one of these sort of light sort of sunlit green here, which is that sort of limey yellow green. And then we can add some darker ones later on, but try and keep a few little gaps. Um, Robin Donnellan has asked again, what colours for the tree trunks, please? Uh, tree trunks, I mix up a little bit of um, um, Payne's Grey and Burnt Umber. And just added water first, uh, you know, not too thick, but thick enough. <laughs> That's a, uh, if you get the idea. Well, you can always test it out on a piece of paper first, can't you? Yes, I said, yeah, exactly. Um, so it's like, yeah, very dark, dark brown. Of course, I mean, there's, there's other colours in there as well. What I've done, I've left a few little gaps. So it's not just solid brown all the way. Um, so now, once again, keeping... Focus in on that so people can see the gaps. Yeah. Okay. 
Like I said, normally I get um, I get time to walk around. I do a few brush strokes. I often don't finish a painting in a class because um, I'm walking around poking other people and um, saving disasters and all this kind of thing. Um, but uh, so I've got a drawer full of unfinished masterpieces, which will be an exhibition one day. Um, but this is hard work. I want to try. I'm looking for sympathy now because I'm actually working non-stop, ladies and gentlemen, non-stop to uh, get this in. And on that note. Without further ado, um, light green for those sunlit sort of leaves. Uh, once again, change, change of brush, that's kind of slightly random. So I notice this time you're kind of almost dabbing it on and going slightly more downwards yeah, rather than... this is quite sort of um, dabby, I think is probably the, the artistic term. And the paint um, seems quite a bit thicker as well. Yeah, we, we, it's um, pretty thick. So this is almost um, going on opaque. I'm just sort of randomly putting these in. You don't need to put all the leaves in. Um, what I'm trying to do is just kind of get a feel. You can kind of go, leave a few gaps showing them with the sky showing through. And um, that's, that's about there, that's quite nice. And uh, down there. Those distant hills are completely distant now, aren't they? I've, I might have to put those back in. <clears throat> so I'm just putting a few, yeah, with the thicker paint, it will cover the, um, the tree trunks and stuff. So that will work quite nicely. Um, and work with that colour mixed up, I'm going to put a little bit of, a bit of that light colour over here as well. Just kind of, yeah, don't put them too regularly. What colour are the leaves? The leaves are, I've got, um, it's a kind of sap green and also straight out of the tube lime green which is quite, these are all from the, the marvellous company SAA, which makes some, yeah, great, um, great watercolour paints and materials available online, and up until a few weeks ago were delivered to France. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a kind of yellowy green mix. Um, so which one is the? Uh, it's, this is the lime green, I think. Okay. Here. And that is, what's that one called? I think cadmium lemon. Okay. <coughs> right. Yeah, because it's really lemony, isn't it? Is, it? Isn't it? Yeah. Um, and then I'll just put a, so we're just putting a, it's that kind of spring, it's often difficult to get that kind of spring green colour. So I'm hoping this will um, kind of work. There we are, a few of those. And then while that's still damp over there, I'm going to go in with a little bit stronger. The, the classic sap green everyone knows has been on a painting holiday or a painting course, knows that um, that's obviously my favourite colour. We did have a, uh, some artists from Scotland come here for a painting holiday uh, a couple of summers ago and um, she was struggling capturing the, 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 the light and the that sort of southern Mediterranean feel of the greenery in the vineyards and so on. And we realised that she'd got quite a dour um, watercolour kit of kind of sombre somber greens and browns like a sort of a wet day north of Glasgow kind of uh, range. It's like, uh, try this, sap green. So She's not looked back. Sylvia Grout is um, watching and she said Sylvia would like to know whether she can breathe yet and what time is rose what time is rosé time <laughs> uh, so, yeah, oh, she's painting, yeah this is it normally we uh, there's a coffee comes in biscuits you know all that kind of thing so oh look at it you see this is the problem of working for me this is now running down the page and um, I might just dab it a bit there we go Uh, yes, Sylvia, you can have a glass of rosy any time you like, although if my calculations are correct, it's about half past ten in England. Or are you in France now? Anyway, okay, I've got this slightly richer green mixed up now. What we'll do, we'll I'll take a short break. Um, so now I'm looking around here, I'm adding a little bit of stronger green in. Not too watery, uh, because it's still wet underneath. I guess officially this is wet into wet, and we are getting that slightly nice sort of uh, bleeding. blending and bleeding of the colours together. Um, there we go. I've just the sun is coming from. Always remember that. Yeah, the sun. Is, where, where's the sun coming from? The sun is coming from the left hand side, so it's going to be lighter on the top and a little bit darker underneath. So here we go. Let's try that. And, uh, cool. Is that all coming up? Yeah. Is that, is it, 
I'm just looking, is that, are they seeing what we're seeing? They are, they're a few seconds behind us. I see, okay. Ah, right, yes. Okay. So there's a slight delay. Yeah. I mean, do you want to come around and have a look at the uh, general thing flat on? Yeah. Sorry for all this slightly higgledy piggledy. My arm's starting to get tired. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's, I can't, so, once again, sorry if you just join us. We do apologise for the vertical format. Ideally, when you're painting a landscape painting, doing a landscape tutorial, you would like to have a landscape filming. But for some reason, it was sulking and refused, despite unlocking various things, refused to run in landscape format. So we're doing our best. The show must go on, as they say. So I am now going to just add a bit more of that kind of mid-green, that kind of sap green, over to this tree here. I'm going to put a few more branches on, a bit more optimistic, a bit more spring-like. Um, here we go, that's the kind of thing. Um, you know, I mean, Sylvia asked if she could have a glass of rosy. I'm sure people are just drifting in and out, <laughs> having their breakfast, coming back again, and uh, all that kind of thing. Hopefully there'll be somebody still there, uh, vaguely paying attention. Were you checking your Facebook messages? And uh, with one eye on the TV as well, Sandra Van B. Okay. Okay, that's good. That's almost a little bit too regular. So what I'm going to do is just, yeah, let's have a few more leaves down there. Let's just stand back. Okay, yeah, so. Should we all stand back? We all stand back, yeah, it's all good to stand back now and again. Just to kind of, um, oh, what's happened here? This has gone off a bit of a funny angle. Um, what I'm going to do is just continue with this screen. Um, like I said, if, if you tune into any of our YouTube uh, tutorial, you will see this is all normally set at twice the speed and edited down to about 10 minutes. Um, yeah, in that case, it's probably a good time to plug our YouTube channel. You'll just tap in Painting in France. Di Peter says, what is the name of the mid-green you are using? Mid-green is the classic and legendary sap green. This is sap green. It's quite a sort of fresh um, south of France green. It's got to be the number one bestseller in the art shops of this region. Um, and what I'm going to do, I'm just going to get this, actually the leaves go all the way down, don't they? I'm going to put, you know, you could speed things up and just rush that, but I'm just going to build that up and put a few, then I will put some darker tones in there as well. Um, what do you think so far? <coughs> I watched them. Um, Do you want a cup of coffee? Yeah, go ahead. Just, <laughs> take a break. I watched a, I watched a couple of uh, YouTube tutorials just to see what they do, uh, you know, how, how filming is and everything. And some of them are pretty dull, really, aren't they? It's like, come on, have a bit of sense of humour, muck around, please. You know, the people are watching it. I watched one last night, a guy doing pastel drawing. It's like, why am I watching this live? There's no point. There's no interaction at all. But, um, Hopefully, you'll find this vaguely amusing, even though the results aren't guaranteed to be any good. But let's recap what we've done. We've, we've started very lightly. We've gone and done the sky. And you can see that looked quite strong, but now it's disappearing back. I've got a nice gradation of the hills coming towards us. And then as you get here, the colours are getting stronger and so on and so forth. And now we're getting the trees in. It's looking like a, a pretty sunny day. So I'm going to let those leaves dry on there. I will put some tarp on and hopefully these areas will now be a bit cold as well. How's the arm going? Do you want to sit down? Um, I think I'm just going to swap arms for a while. Swap arms a bit, yeah. my, my right arm has gone numb. Right arm has gone numb. Okay. Uh, we'll have a round of applause please for uh, my wife Monica who's um, stood in. And, um, Denny Davies says, can we all have a coffee? Yeah, do I have a coffee? I'll just do this bit um, in the meantime. And I think the video will be available. No, I shouldn't tell you when the video will be available later as well. What it will be? Just go shopping now. <laughs> well, um, they can't go shopping. Can't go shopping. <laughs> We've got a captive audience. I know where you live. <laughs> if anyone goes out, we'll be watching it. <clears throat> um, so where are we? What are we doing now? What are you doing now? Um, I'm just sort of basically. If you look over here again. Uh, oh, that's what I was going to say. The reason. I'm doing the tutorial and Monica's doing the filming because she is in her dressing gown and slippers and she's got her hair in curlers and she's having a fag. 
So she's not coming around the front of the camera. He's such a liar. <laughs> anyway, what I'm going to do now is add a little bit even more drama. No, they cry. That's impossible. More drama to these kind of areas over here. Basically, it's that hook is green again. I tend to use stuff straight out of the tube, I must admit. Hook is green and quite, quite short grassy brush strokes back here and longer ones down here. Do you see what I mean? It's like slightly spikier grass effect there. Quite random strokes. I'm just kind of getting the effect. You could be here till Christmas if you do every brush stroke. It's not, it's not good to do everything. It also can start looking sort of overly messy, can't it? It can look, uh, yeah, overly messy, overly worked, um, which is uh, not what we're doing today. Um, so yeah. Put that in there. And what I'm trying to do is get that kind of look, that lightness is still coming there. So I'm going to put try and put this little dark area in here. Here we go. So now we're just sort of coming round. Get that. This little bit. I mean, it's so quiet on the streets outside. Normally, <coughs> when I'm sat at my desk, um, I hear. The, the haunting and tempting sounds of groups of cyclists riding through our village out to the hills and um, no longer. We've uh, all been locked down. Uh, all you hear now in the village is the sound of turbo trainers and pedal, uh, what do they call those, treadmills. <laughs> People waving from the window. You know, the <laughs> we did, didn't we, the guy the other day? <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. In fact, Monica and myself, I don't know, how are you keeping fit? <clears throat> are you um, doing anything? Um, We've actually got uh, a gym room upstairs, but a bedroom we converted. We moved everything to one side and put a couple of um, what they call turbo trainers. Um, let me get a glass of water in. Um, it's basically like a little triangular affair with a roller that, that you bolt your bike into. Um, so you can kind of pedal away and get some exercise without actually going anywhere. And um, there's a number of apps. You know, we have a good an old computer in front of us and um, what we've taken to doing is downloading a few um, rides from around the Alps, around Lake, I mean for example two days ago we went uh, around the hills around Lake Garda which was beautiful. Someone's put a little GoPro camera on their bike, ridden around the circuit and then put it on YouTube years ago and so you can sit there pedaling, chatting with the wife, hello oh should we stop here? Oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm knocking, I was welling up because then we rode through some beautiful Italian villages, virtually, rode through them, and it's, the streets were filled and the cafes were buzzing. It's like, oh, too much. Di Peters has given me a, a clap. Thanks, Di. <laughs> oh, good, that's okay. And Janine has joined us from, Janine, uh, from Montague, uh, where, is, where, where we were meant to be this weekend. Oh, we would yeah. have arrived back on up from our camping trip. Yeah, this is it. So, well, that would have been great. But I guess it's, it's you know, we're, we're locked down here, so we're at, at least we're at home. Well, the South Africans are even more locked down than we are because they're not allowed to um, leave, they're not allowed to leave their properties all, at all for walks. At all? Really? No. Wow. Well, no. Has it really come to that? Yeah. God, I don't know how, how things are where you are. I guess it's, um, it's a global, global problem, global issue. Um, I guess it varies from place to place. Um, I don't know if Dan Moore's still on. Dan, you been able to go cycling anywhere, or uh, or not? I don't know. The I, I believe it's it's tricky to go out. Certainly impossible as a group, or not illegal. But um, hey, these things have to be done. Anyway, you can see what I'm doing now is just adding um, a little bit of texture. You've got a. F are you still on your number ten brush, or has it gone finer? Yeah, this is a number ten okay. brush still. So you've pretty well, apart from when you did the washes on the background, that's pretty well what, the only brush you've been using. It's true. Actually, you're right, yeah. I mean, you don't, you don't really need many brushes. I mean, that's the book. I used that one. I don't think I've even used that one, a middle-sized one. So a big one and a medium one. A big one and a relatively small one. <laughs> Well, it's not yeah. that small because, I mean, in comparison to those rarely fine brushes you get, that's still yeah. fairly substantial. But the nice thing about this, they come to a nice point, you see, so you can 
you can sort of do fine work and then put it on its side, get a little bit bolder. I mean, I think the, um, I was using these. Um, Janine says, how do you know that I'm, I was watching? Nothing. Um, nothing you do, Janine, we don't know about. No, everybody's names that are come flip up on my screen. So as people join... So um, Robin from Australia said we can go to the shops and we can go out to exercise. Okay, that's fine then. And your nephew is saying he's still doing solo rides around Bristol. Ah, really? Okay, I bet the streets are quiet. That's well, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, going back to the, the job. This is also some brushes I use. These are, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not sponsored by these people. I wish I was. Um, these are little travel brushes also from the SAA. These are great, actually. I bought these not long ago. Oh, in fact, I got these as a little gift for introducing a friend. And um, they come in quite a nice little pack. They uh, close up very small. And uh, they work really well, actually. That's, to be honest, that's all you need as well. And you can literally almost put them in your back pocket, can't you? You can. Um, the, the funny thing was, I went, years ago, I went on a painting workshop at the NEC in Birmingham. And... Um, uh, this was the first time I've done it. I just went to see what they do and how it works. There's a guy called Steve Hall, brilliant watercolour artist. And um, I turned up, it must have been like this. Um, <clears throat> I think I turned up with like perhaps two brushes like this, you know. <laughs> that one uh, seems a bit worse for wear. Yeah, that's me pulling it um, And other people next to me just pulled out a sort of immaculate art case, opened it up, and as they opened it up, a kind of rack of brushes, kind of like rockets. It's like, wow. Just like from super thin to super fat and flat brushes, like absolutely stunning. <laughs> I did have brush envy. But my painting was okay in the end. So, you know, you really don't need that many colours, uh, that many colours or that many brushes either. Uh, so we've got Nikki Shale said her daughter has just ridden 180 kilometres on her indoor bike for a charity ride. Oh my, 100, indoors? <laughs> that must have taken a lot. That was a long day in the saddle. Good grief, that's incredible. Well done for that. I shall be doing that. Seems like a lot of people are, well, not getting out on their bikes, but. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's it. Uh, I said there's lots of apps doing um, um, sort of indoor training sessions. I don't know, uh, Neil Sinclair does a prison cell workout every morning, so he's absolutely ripped. Nikki like said it took her seven hours. Seven hours. Wow. I hope she had something sort of like the view of Blake Garda when she was <laughs> riding up it. Riding on it. Um, okay, how are we doing? This is the grassy banks. What I'm going to do, I'll let this dry now, and I'm going to put some darker darker green in those trees now. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take that hooker's Annie. green. Okay, so you're back to hookers. Back, is, back to hookers. And I'm going to put a little bit of a bit of deep blue in there as well. Why is it called hooker's green? You know, I like know. sap hookers green I can green. understand, but hookers? I hookers, mean... I think it's probably um, someone like, uh, that's another fact, I'm just making it, but I'm probably sort of William Hooker. Hooker discovered it in the Victorian era and uh, named it um, accordingly. People will correct me, I'm sure. I'm sure so you put, you put a bit of blue in that as well? I put a bit of blue in that. A, a hooker's green is really quite a, a dark, rich, bluey green. But if you add a little bit of blue, like a pathano blue or ultramarine, it just intensifies the blue even more. So um, let's try that. So I'm just going to pass. Um, so it's... Roll the brush to a point, and I'm going to put a few more super dark little areas in. We, now, I was just looking at the, the drawing. Yeah. Can I just go over? Um, it's quite dark on the side, isn't it? Because mm. basically you've got the sun coming in from behind the tree. That's correct. Okay. Um, so now I'm just, this is exactly what I'm doing. I'm putting a few little dark, dark areas in on, um, on this side here. And there we go. How's the arm down here on it? <laughs> Just, just kind of randomly, really, we're just basically adding a little bit of dark down to this side here. Little dowdy brush strokes, sort of leaf, leaf shapes. That's that's fine. There we go. 
and come back to that. That's going to be weird, but I'll adjust that later on. Um, da -da 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 -da. And then, yeah, with that same sort of rich bluey green mix, we'll put some, um, put some over here, look. Can you see that okay? Yeah. And um, would you want to come around this side for change? It's does so you, 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 you can also see some of the other paintings which will be for sale in the foyer afterwards. The uh, oil paintings and some digital paintings from uh, various travels around the world uh, and a painting of our dog. Um, so, yeah, I'm just putting that nice little bit of dark in here and there. It's all quite dark under here. I think I want to take that. It's always good to take the leaves kind of off the page. If you, if you stop your tree before the page, it looks a little bit sort of cut out and stuck on this, this one. But ironically, I mean, you're painting over the, um, the masking tape, aren't you? So you are going to have a clear, you yeah. will have a clean so, edge yeah, at the yeah. end. Yeah, so the, the actual tree won't yeah. be like a blob to stop, yeah. stop there, which never looks very good. Um, okay, I think that's got... A bit dark in there. It's funny, like looking at it from this direction, you really. It's better. Well, it is because you kind of almost like it's, I'm standing in line with the path, and I almost feel like I'm about oh, to walk into it. I think you'll find it is the it is the work of the artist who is <laughs> giving that illusion. <laughs> Where's my beret? Hang on a minute. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. So that's not too bad. That's quite bright. And I think what we'll do is just come down this side a bit more. And maybe I'll put a bit of, there's a bit of kind of, that's a little bit of some horizontal things going on down here. Look, I've taken um, a slightly yellowy green. And we're kind of capturing this, uh, see the footpath, it's not white all the way, or it's not actually white at all, but it's, if you put a few kind of, <coughs> excuse me, brush strokes horizontally in there, it just kind of gives you the, it just helps emphasize the shape. There we go. I'm not going to do all this tan here. Um, that's all right. How's it looking? If you kind of half close your eyes now and again, you just sort of see what, actually I'll, I'll show you my, my mistakes yesterday. Um, what, um, what's nice is to get that kind of, that laid look. I mean, still not quite enough contrast here. <clears throat> I did a test piece yesterday and thought well I'll, oh I know what I'll do I'll just put a wash of grey over all that area um, because that will be instant shadow then <laughs> okay so, yeah because that's one of the things I noticed is yeah. just before you do that is you've literally just been working in shades of green rather than adding because my as a, a novice painter my immediate reaction would be to to do exactly that yeah. why not put a because it, it all looks a little bit grey across there, and it looks a bit yellow across the top. Well, here's an example of how it can all go horribly wrong, <coughs> as you can see. I confess, I confess, I did this yesterday, and like I said, I've got that point where I thought, oh, what I'll do, I'll put a nice big wash of watery grey across here. But if you're gonna do that, you can do that. But what I'd say is you do the grey first. first, and then paint your grassy things on top. As you can see, this is all gone gone wrong, it's gone wrong, it's gone crazy, yeah. I, I hardly slept last night thinking about it, but um, anyway, back to the, oh, that's nice. And we have Helen from Pretoria watching as well. Helen from Pretoria, hi there. That's actually okay. my other aunt. Over there. Okay, good. So it's turning into a family affair. Okay, what I'm going to do, I just want to put that, I kind of want to Increase the contrast here. It's still put a little bit of wet. Yeah, it is a bit. Hair dryer? Hair dryer, yes. Let's do that. <laughs> what you want to see, if you're, if you're, um, with the watercolour, it is about, you have to be patient. You can't just keep dabbing away at it. Otherwise, it'll just all become a bit of a, a blur. It's a bit of a blur. Like, this area here, look. Okay. That's quite nice because it's, it's quite sort of up and downy, for want of a better word. It's like a nice texture. Whereas 
from here is it's got a little bit, it's got a bit soft and a bit gooey. So it is best to just let it dry or accelerate the drying with one of these apparatus. Okay. So, so. Okay. So, what should we do next? I, yeah, hopefully that will have dried that area off. And what I'm going to do is just put a, a bit of a sharpener in here. It's a mix of sap green and hook green. Hook is green. And I'm just going to start putting a few little... Is that better? Yeah, that's dry now. But I just want to... still hint at the, the path is coming there, look. So I'm just going to put that down there. So are you just trying to make that sort of... So you're getting more of a contrast between the light and the dark? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's really what it's always about. Just that by the dark and the light and the dark and the light. Distant hills, dark light. That just brings a picture to life. So if you make it too much... Too sort of tonally similar, it just becomes a bit flat. So that's there we are. That's got a bit more going on. Not going to do too much more than that, really. But we've got how, how are we do for time. Any idea what time is? I have no idea. Twelve oh one. No, we've been going for an hour. Good grief! I've not even had a lie down or a coffee or anything. But anyway, so this is coming on quite nicely. You know, I think what I might do is just. Um, leave that like that. Yeah. I would normally sort of quietly sort of continue putting the, the grass effect down here. And I will put some more details in there. I might even mix a little bit of <coughs> white and green just to flick up that. Yes, in fact, that's what I'll do next. Um, but yeah. Poppies. Let's have a look. There are no poppies in the scene, as you notice, but I thought it's all looking a bit green and the fields are full of poppies at the moment at the moment yeah um but so if i just come through okay i'll come from the other side okay. um cadmium red if you've got a very bright red i'm kind of putting a little cadmium red um here we go and so i'll use a slightly smaller brush oh there's 12 of those Okay, I've got a slightly smaller brush, and what I'm doing, I've got some cadmium red here, and it's literally it's almost straight out of the tube, and I'm just going to dab that on, let's have a hint of some poppies, once again quite, quite random, and not too many, I am planning to do a a poppy tutorial in the coming uh, weeks, so uh, keep your eyes open for that. And uh, there we go. Just have a little bit of something going on down there, and then over here, perhaps. What you have to make sure is that it's kind of dried here, otherwise your poppies will become like sort of jellyfish, which is not a great look. But by putting it on quite neatly, or I mean very thickly, it just sort of stands out from the green quite well, doesn't it? Has to get nearer a little bit larger. That's another one over here. It really is beautiful out there at the moment though, isn't it? Because literally it's it's our greenest time of the year it at is, this time it? of the year. And then all of these poppies that start coming up randomly, either in the fields or in the grass verges. Yeah, I mean, we took some, took some photographs and a little bit of film of some poppies last week. And I went past there this morning, and it's already much more. Much oh, more, really? Yeah, really filling up. <clears throat> so, uh, what I'm going to do now, there's a few poppies in. I might put a few more in, but you can um, keep them random, and uh, they'll look much more natural. What I have got is a little bit of white. There are some little white flowers in there as well, which is quite nice. So, in the same way... Oh, that's what I've got. Um, it's, it's often a good idea to change your water. Uh, I didn't, but luckily it's been mostly green I've been painting. But I've got some more here, which I prepared earlier. Just want to be Peter. And, um, you wouldn't say so, because the containers are so good. <laughs> well, you can't get the staff, that's the problem. Um, the, so now I'm going to, with clean water, I'm going to put some uh, 
white. Um, in the same way, very thick, just about runny enough, add enough water to make, them, Let me just make it flow. There we are. Slightly finer, but this is uh, a number four brush, imitation sable. Yeah, okay. Uh, and then I've just got a few little white. What's important is to have the grass dark enough for your little white flowers to um, stand out. Once again, quite, quite random. I'll put a few in up here. There we go. Then there's some over here. Artistic license is the word. And they just brighten up that area. Maybe a few down here. It's quite nice, isn't it? Um, Delts lifted. Yeah, just a little sparkle. I often you do this technique with, um, if you're doing a, a sea in a beach or a harbour, and it's quite nice just to put a few little white dots of, um, of white gouache. Is that not it's seen as cheating? Cheating? Please. The watercolour police are probably on their way round as we speak. Because, yes, theoretically, a purist would use um, masking fluid to um, mask that little blob of masking fluid everywhere. They're going to have some dots. And that would dry. They'd paint the picture and then rub away the masking fluid, uh, eventually having this um, scene. But... I am a professional artist, you know, I know a few tricks. You know, <laughs> white gouache is much quicker than doing all that with the masking fluid. In fact, I, I often impress people come here on holiday, they, they, they come here for workshops and they bring some amazing equipment. And I learned quite a few techniques, actually, which is good. We did a course last year uh, with um, just a day with at the Olive Farm, wasn't it? Olive Farm domain. And they were oil painters. And we did a day watercolour painting with them, a morning and then a lovely picnic lunch. And they were slick. They were like safari painters and they had like backpacks which like folded out and into sort of tables and chairs and, and equipment that's kind of ding, 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 ding. And I thought, wow, this is great. I did, I did take a few photographs looking for tips. But uh, it's all about getting it, getting it familiar with equipment that you like and you can use and um, narrowing it down. You don't need too much. Uh, and, and practice, you know, the, the combinations that were best for you, especially outdoors if you've got to carry this stuff. I mean, we've got this lovely uh, kind of French style easel here, French easel, which is great. It, it, it bit me yesterday, it bit me, because I was trying to move it around and the whole thing collapsed down on my hand, which is like bloody painful. So, of course, yeah, modern technology, you, I, I've got lighter, you know, metal, aluminium, uh, uh, probably carbon um, frames, you know, so try uh, easels which which make uh, life a bit easier um so let's have a look we've got that in front of that all, all i wanted to do i think was just cheat a bit more and i'm going to mix some white in with some of this very pale green yellow color um and what we've got we've got to see here you've got a few little flicks going up into the dark areas and now this is all dry all being well I can flick that up. So, um, let's try and get over here first. This is like a sort of white, ah yes, that works. So just kind of flick Sorry. over the, over the top there, and maybe just, see what I'm doing, I'm just kind of, you see that? Yeah. So I'm just, yeah, flicking that. It's, it's a tiny little detail but it just helps to soften that edge, make it a little bit more three-dimensional. Is that going to work? Yeah, it looks quite nice, doesn't it? Once again, quite, quite sort of random. And you could probably put a, with that kind of light green mix, you can probably just put a few little grassy pieces in here and there. Because it's got a white mix in it, sort of, it's white with a little bit of green. It's it's opaque, so that is going to cover what you've got on the Sorry. <laughs> I went for a little wonder there. <laughs> well, well, yeah, just, okay. There we go. So I'm just putting a just a few little 
very light green and white gouache things in just to to break that up um, so we have a big one over here in fact while we've got it we're going to have a little bit of white to our tree trunk mix and um, I think my stomach's asking for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, actually I've nearly finished. So I'm just gonna, yeah. I've just added a little bit of kind of white and brown to the edge of there. Um, what I wanna do is stand back a little bit. I think that's quite, I think, that's, I think I'm gonna stop there. No, no, oh no, sorry, one more thing. Um, and what I've got now what I would generally do is let that dry. I mean, I might put a, another wash on that hill there, just to give it another... So I'll try that. I'll risk. I'll risk my own painting. No, there. don't. No? Yes, no, break the vote. I'm going to put a little... Imagine, yeah, you, you, you want to go back and put another little layer of hill. I'm just practicing this. I've got a bit of a mixed a sort of hill colour. And I'm just going to put a little bit more... In there like that. And what you can do, so I put a little, so then I'll rinse my brush out, wipe it off. I'm just going to wipe the bottom of there, and it just sort of hints that, you know, oh, it looks like a bit of a bit of mist in there. That mm. will come try. Mm. Mm. See, oh. You're quite clever. Oh well, you know, <laughs> yeah, I didn't get where I was. This and that, blah blah blah. Right. And then on that note, what I'm going to do as well. Well, Martin said we had to do it, you had to do it, so. <laughs> Love the way, yeah. it, when I start filming, yeah. it's the royal we. Suddenly I start yeah. taking credit for, for stuff that Simon's doing. <laughs> well, there we go. But now what I'm doing as well, I'm going to zoom in that. This is, I'm just strengthening up that edge in the same way, hinting that there's a few trees and little, little bushes. Um, I'm just kind of, and you kind of run it down into the misty area. That's quite nice, isn't it? Oh, I'm about to fall over a spaniel. Oh, yes. Where's that? She's gotten up she? from her <laughs> repose. I see. There we are. So that's. So now I've added a little bit of extra something to that mid-range hills. That's going to look a bit green, but there we are. Um, but to finish off, um, I have got a magic uh, little black watercolour crayon, um, Faber Castell. Uh, this is quite a weird one. Always use it. Um, I mean, you can leave it like that, or for that extra something at no extra cost. Well, the cost of a small crane. I like to add a few little details. Um, just... Millie, you've got to move. Millie, Unfortunately, I've got, got I've got a Wait. spaniel who's decided that she wants to join the party. Oh yeah, let me just show these. Box. Why? Yeah. Why are you showing everybody our oranges? Yeah. Look at these amazing oranges. This is just a small selection of what was picked off our tree in the garden. They were also, there's a, there's a, a tube... <laughs> there a tube tutorial. A, a YouTube tutorial, um, painting in France. Uh, Orange is one, and the, sh the shock bestseller, Orange is two. So go and have a look at those. They're fantastic. They absolutely are delicious. We have got neighbours queuing up to, um, to have them. So, back to the finished final touches. We've got all those nice layers going on. And I'm just, in the foreground, I'm just going to put a few little stones and things like that. Just to give a little bit of, you know, we can hint at some more, what have we got? It's that kind of thing. Quite random. And just going to fade it out into the path. Let me just go in a bit. Okay, there's the, uh, kind of a few little stones hinted in there. Right, there we are. Got a few compliments coming through. Compliments, that's what we like. Pam says yeah. it looks great. I paid her a lot of money. Di Peters says, yes, I like that. The hills look great. Oh, good. Helen um, Clapham has gone. Lovely to see you. Good, thanks, and, Helen. And hear you both. We're missing you on our Thursday classes. Helen's one of our regulars that come uh, along to she's our... She's been coming since she was a girl. <laughs> that's amazing, but there we are. I think all it needs to do now... So, so Dyer's asked, is that a coloured pencil? So uh, actually, no, it's, it's, it's just a black, it's a black crayon. But 
it works. You'll have to put this on if you add this. But it's a it's a black watercolor black crayon, crayon, isn't yes. it? So if you paint it over it, it would actually smudge. So you kind of leave this as the final touch. Um, and it's kind of more sympathetic than a pencil. You know, if you put a pencil drawing in, it looks a little bit harsh. These are quite sort of soft. There's a nice bit of light and dark flow. You know, you can, you know, we we'll just flick a few of those in. Um, it's, but you can't really paint over it again now because it'll just smudge. Unless that's the effect you're looking for. Oh, is that the alarm? <laughs> is, that, is that time up? No, 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 it's a mess. Anyway, okay, there's only one thing to do. Sign it. Go have a drum roll. Oh. Ah, Liz, Liz Richards Y is also oh, watching. Oh, great. Good. Okay. Well, like From say, Wales. From Wales. We, we have gone global here, yeah, global. And I do apologise once again if you just join us um, for the portrait format. We had a few technical problems, which we will resolve for the next one, um, so we can watch it all landscape. I mean, um, hopefully you've got the idea of, of what's been going on. Um, just, I... just a quick one. Yeah. Um, for anybody who did miss the beginning, um, once we finish this, we'll, it actually stays on. I think it stays up for 24 hours, so you can, can actually go back and watch the beginning again if you want to, and... Fast forward through bits that you don't necessarily fast forward. <laughs> want to watch. You know, all the bits of Simon. <laughs> fast forward. And then finally, let's just that one. We can... Ah, Mac is also. Oh, right, yeah, good. You know, Mac and Linda? Yeah. Just got up. That's the spirit. Okay, I'll just turn that up. Oh, look at that. There we go. So that, I'll leave that one. But the nice thing about, oh, just get a little technique. This is um, 420 gram paper, so it's quite, quite stiff which enables you to paint on quite heavy washes without it buckling too much. And the nice thing about running a tape around the edge is of course you get a nice little sort of frame um, when you're finished. So that's, that's quite a nice effect. But what you will find is that that is now just a bit too small. This is, this is a quarter imperial size, which is just too small for the, for the frame mount that comes in a 50 by 40 um, because that's frame. imperial and the frames yeah, are exactly. metric. So, but what you can do... Uh, yes, yeah. What you can do is get um, the... Uh, you can get the frame mounts made to size. So you can... Oh, I'm only checking the Facebook post. I'm not. It's just I want to make that go away. Okay. Um, what you can do, you can order frames online. Well, obviously not at the moment. You can order them and specify the size of the hole in the middle of the mount. So have a slightly thicker mount, uh, which which would then just slightly crop in on there, which would be um, which works very well. Um, doesn't cost much at all. But I think should we call it a day there, darling? What do you think? Well, I think I think my um, my arm is calling it a day. Well, it's calling it a day. Like I said, what we've got um, this is the first live watercolor tutorial. We'll perhaps do some more. I think uh, beaches have been requested. Um, I'm not very good at um, flowers. I was going to do some flowers, um, but I've already done some poppies. But um, no, maybe next time. Um, this was yeah, maybe tulip. I thought tulips, kind of spring-like. No, we don't want to do that. So we thought this is quite a nice scene. And I've added the poppies just to give it that kind of spring-like uh, ambiance. And it is where we live, it's and it's where, where we, we live, it's yeah, where we yeah. hold up painting holidays and uh, good I forgot to plug the painting holidays so don't forget if you love this area if you love this painting if you like me and Monica and Millie the dog you can come here on a painting holiday painting it was it www.painting-in-france.com we'll put all the details in a post below and um, what's coming to be coming up we're working on more YouTube uh, tutorials if you go to painting in France on YouTube you've got a nice lot of tutorials there already um, plus, plus a marvellous lifestyle videos we've put together, a weekend in Nice, visiting the Saturday market, oh, music and everything. Um, and then oh, we're working on um, an e-book or two, so hopefully we'll have more information about that in the coming weeks. But I hope you've enjoyed this, and um, yeah, we're not <laughs> we hope to see you again soon. And you've got a lot of people saying thank you, they're off to have their Good. coffees and lunches and Good. glasses of rosé. Glasses of rosé. Glasses of wine all round. I mean, if Marilyn uh, eventually gets it, I don't know if you watch this on um, New Life in the Sun, Series 5, Episodes 16 to 21, look them up. Uh, New Life in the Sun, 
And the big drama was that I didn't have a bottle of rosé waiting for the first guests. I have beaten myself with an empty bottle of rosé for the last few weeks, and I can promise in future people will have a wonderful welcome basket of wine uh, when they arrive. Okay. Well, keep, uh, keep safe and keep healthy, everybody, and um, yeah, enjoy the lockdown, and I'll, I'll be in touch with more stuff soon. Okay. Bye for now.